I'm in the studio today with Sasha Polverini. He's a senior program officer with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in the Financial Services for the Poor Division. But perhaps more excitingly, he's also the chairman of a new ITUT focus group on digital financial services. And he's with us uh, to take part in a special workshop running today. Sasha, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Could you tell us a little bit about the workshop and particularly about this new focus group? What, why has it been set up? What does it hope to achieve? And why is the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation involved? So this focus group, this is the first day of a two-day event. So today and tomorrow, we have uh, almost more than 100 uh, organizations uh, registered for this event. And tomorrow is the first meeting of the focus group on digital financial services for financial inclusion. And I think it's important to highlight and stress the financial inclusion element of, of, this, of this activity um, because we are not um, there to really develop a digital financial services market per se. We are really trying to understand what kind of solutions could be developed or discussed or, uh, and reach a consensus amongst different players to provide um, market participants, but also policymakers with new tools that could uh, help them advancing the financial inclusion agenda locally. So this workshop is a, is a way for all the participants or participating organizations to kind of refresh a bit their, their, their understanding of who's doing what. Uh, there are a number of organizations, internationally leading organizations like the World Bank, uh, CGAP, AFI, GSMA, who are playing an increasingly important role in this space. And so the question could be why the ITU today and why the ITU you know, is, is, is interested in um, digital financial services and financial inclusion. The reason is that um, we are not planning uh, with this initiative to duplicate work. We're really trying to understand where there are issues that are overlapping or where there are gaps that needs to be filled so that putting together um, a wide group of organizations from different perspective and different uh, sort of with different interests, uh, but part of the value chain when you think about digital financial services, whether we can reach a broader consensus on some of these on these tools. And so we're not there to duplicate work, but really to leverage what has been done by the other players, the other organization in this field and get a broader agreement on, on some of these uh, well, solutions. A question of bringing in the international community, public and private sector, a uh, meeting right. place for, right. for best so practice. So when we're thinking about digital financial services, uh, f particularly f in, 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 in our perspective as, as uh, the financial services for the poor team, we traditionally have focused from a regulatory and policy perspective on a very limited number or class of policymakers, the central bank and the minister of finance, because we're talking about financial services and they are the lead regulators in this space. But when we add the digital adjective to this expression, digital financial services for digital financial inclusion, then we need to take into account that there are other players and there are other regulators that need to be part of this debate because increasingly these services are offered by non-financial institutions, so mobile network operators, which is the industry that the ITU kind of regulates. This is your constituency. So we thought that it, it was really the time to think about a broader community of regulators and how these regulators talk to each other, how they communicate and how they collaborate to find the right solution for the market to develop. Will they be able to speak the same language? Those two regulatory communities are quite strong, uh, no doubt have their own parameters, their own language, do you think that they'll be able to find a, a common ground easily? I think there is a, a way to find a common ground. And there are some examples of good communication and good collaboration in some countries. I mean, I wouldn't say it doesn't happen at all. But it's still uh, uh, an area for improvement, if you want. So uh, and potentially, we could also say that there are other department of a, of a government, uh, like uh, agriculture or the Ministry for Interiors, that might be also involved in this debate, because I mean, it's, talk, it's, it's, a, it's a broader debate. Financial inclusion is not just uh, finance and delivering financial services, also possibly digitizing social funds uh, delivered to the community. Um, but at least if we have these two particularly uh, set of regulators, the telecommunication authorities and the central banks talking to each other, given that there are still uh, areas where there's a lot of uncertainty of who's doing what. And so the roles and responsibilities are not that clear. And in our perspective, 
more clarity can help the market because instead of having opacity and uh, uh, ambiguity that can lead to arbitrage and inefficiency in the market, having a clear understanding of who is doing what and what are the roles and responsibility for each is creating all, all a, be a better ecosystem and a better environment for the industry, for the regulators, a better understanding of the risk and hopefully uh, a better provision and supply of services for, for the poor. So, which is our target. In One of the other participants actually in this workshop had stressed to me the importance of competition in, in the digital financial services market so that uh, prices uh, stay low for uh, the poorest people who need to use these services. Absolutely. So this is, this is certainly our focus, is to uh, uh, deliver affordable and sustainable and scalable uh, financial services for, for the poor. And so the cost items, uh, the cost item is, is, uh, is an important element of, of this equation. Uh, our activities are really aimed at thinking about solution to reduce cost, uh, because most of the time when the industry pay a higher cost for compliance reason, for investment, for other sorts of reasons, they tend to translate those costs to the customer. And so for people that are living with less than $2 per day, even paying 50 cents is going to be a big challenge. Uh, and so thinking uh, about different business model and solution that can reduce the cost associated to these services, mm -hmm. certainly one of our main objectives and challenges. You and I were talking a little earlier on the issue of diversity. Can, is it really fair to talk about the poor as a, as a block or are there different ways that we have to reach different communities, for example, women or perhaps different uh, cultures, different parts of the world? Or It's not certainly a block. It's a very diversified block. I think we couldn't say that uh, if we if we quote the the traditional number, we're talking about 2.5, 2.6 billion people living um, with this two point do two dollars per day. Um, there are differences because of cultural differences, uh, because of the fact that women and girls, for example, are at disadvantage. Even within the segment of the poor, they are a subsegment. And then we can also single out, for example, smallholder farmers as another categories of. Uh, poor people, poor households uh, that have different needs uh, because related to their business. So it's a definitely a diversified community that um, has different needs and probably at some point we will have to think about different solutions for different clusters of, of, of people within the poor. What about barriers like uh, literacy, numeracy, uh, local languages? Uh, is, this a, is this something that you'll be looking at in this new focus group? Well, not specifically. Uh, we try to find areas, uh, as I said earlier, um, that are really lying in between financial regulators and telecommunication regulators. So there will be some technical aspects if we think about, for example, security. Uh, this is an area where maybe the central bank has a perspective about what is the right level of security that needs to be guaranteed in the system. But from an infrastructure perspective, also in terms of uh, who needs to guarantee that high level of security, this is probably the owner of the channel. And so the telecommunication company, the mobile network operators, and here we see a role for the uh, telecommunication authority to make sure that that robustness is uh, guaranteed in the system. So literacy is more linked to uh, you know policy objectives and uh, you know, consumers' protection policies that are more of the part of the, if you want, the, 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 the um, part of the policy that could be developed by the central bank or the ministry. I was wondering of maybe if, if technology could help overcome uh, some of those barriers, you know, uh, supporting uh, uh, a text to voice capacity to overcome people's uh, inability to use a a there written might, interface. Or? There might be some of that covered by the focus group because we are going to have uh, a subgroup. Uh, so the activities of the focus group will be uh, articulated in different subgroup because of being uh, such a large group of organization, we can't proceed all together at the same time. So we have to divide and conquer somehow. And so we will have different work streams with a, with a chair uh, and the lead. And uh, one of the working group that we are thinking about developing and organizing is about technology and innovation. So if the security system that relies on the PIN code is not the most efficient and there are new technologies coming up on the market, that instead of numbers use pictures, uh, that could be something that we want to uh, 
uh, track at least. So um, understanding what kind of disruptive technology would be uh, adopted in this in this market. Tell me why the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, particularly uh, a foundation that started uh, its life in the in the health sector, is now looking further afield into things like digital financial services. So the objective of the foundation in general is to really allow all people to have a healthy and productive life. And one of the way to achieve these objectives is really to uh, promote access to financial services to all. And uh, the segment of the population that we are targeting, those people, as I said, they are living, who are living with less than $2 per day, they really uh, struggle to access financial services, the form of financial services. So really going to a bank, open an account, having savings and insurance. It's very costly if it's not at all to say that it's impossible almost for them to access these this services. So they go into the informal sector. So savings group or, or you know, they, they uh, get money from family members, from friends, or you know the big phenomenon of the remittances, people in the diaspora sending money back home. So the idea is really, and, 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 and the approach we're taking, that access to financial services can increase welfare, and so can really allow uh, poor people to and poor households to seize business opportunity that can lift them out of poverty, or al can allow them to weather shocks. And we know that in this situation, even a, a disease or a death, but sometimes even a positive event like a wedding could be very capital intensive and can really push uh, a family in, in, in poverty again, just because the expenses that are associated with this, these events are very, very high. So access to financial services is, is important and there, there's increasing evidence that it's really increasing welfare uh, if, if it's properly done. But these services are not available just because this, this segment of the population, this, this, the, the poor, they transact in small uh, value. So they transact a lot, but it's really very, very small value. So for the brick and mortar traditional financial institution, it's becoming very, very difficult to think about a business model that could be uh, profitable for them. And uh, the use of the information and communication technology, the use of uh, mobile technologies and mobile devices through which you can pay uh, bills or you can transfer money from one person to another person domestically or internationally is the first step to then bring these people more closely, closely uh, to uh, financial services with the objective, of course, not to allow them to just transfer money because the simple transfer of money and the simple payment is not being financially included. But really as a first step in a, on a ladder, if you want, where in, at some point they will be eligible and they will have access to small credits, small insurance and small savings. One last question. Uh, it was mentioned in discussions earlier this morning that uh, this can have a, a, a even wider a beneficial uh, socioeconomic effect because not only does it help uh, reach out to poorer people, but it helps governments in poorer countries deliver services uh, much more cost efficiently, so improving their services to their own communities. Do you yes. agree? Yes. This is certainly one of our uh, objectives and an area of intervention is how to digitize government to people payment. So this bulk payments, uh, if we think about countries like India or Indonesia, that disperse huge amount of money in subsidies, social subsidies, family subsidies that currently are disbursed in cash with lots of inefficiencies, with potential for corruption and the uncertainty that the recipient receives the full amount and is the right recipient. So by a being able to digitizing this bulk payment, we, we have examples of efficiency that can, that can be gained uh, in terms of cost reduction, but also the traceability of these payments that is uh, increasing also the reliability and the transparency of the whole system and making sure that the recipient really get the money they are entitled to, to receive from the government for their needs. So uh, this is certainly an area that can allow to create a significant mass because instantly poor people will be able to access an account, a mobile wallet or a bank account to receive these subsidies, which can then, then be the open door for other services later on. Sasha Polverini, very best of luck with your new focus group and look forward to catching up with you in a year or so to hear th how things Thank are going. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.